Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I will be doing my presentation on my twin, of course, and my twin's name is Sarah Zellit. Her last name is spelled Z-E-L-I-T-T. -E -T. And I actually did my interview with Sarah exactly one month ago today. <laughs> so I did it a little while ago, which uh, we did it over Zoom. And luckily, I, with her permission, uh, was able to audio record our Zoom call. So that way I could re-listen and re-listen again and take back all the good pieces of advice and information that I'm looking forward to be sharing with all of you today. Uh, most of the questions I asked her were from Barb's list. However, I did have a few questions um, on my own that I wanted to ask her as well, and we will be discussing that in a bit. Our interview actually started off with Sarah asking me about myself, which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, so I was describing my kind of short ASL journey so far. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, I took the uh, summer intensive six week course here at BCC, went on to the ASL and Deaf Studies program, and I'm now obviously in the interpreting program. And Sarah said, my, my uh, journey started the exact same way as you. So right off the bat, we were able to establish a connection, which I thought was great. So first question I had for Sarah was, how long have you been out in the industry for? So Sarah graduated from Douglas uh, in the interpreting program in 2010. So she's got just over a decade of experience under her belt. I then asked Sarah what type of interpreting she does. So Sarah uh, dabbles in lots of different types of interpreting. She does a little bit of BRS, a little bit of community interpreting, some medical interpreting, a little bit of work in the deafblind community. However, her bread and butter, if you will, is post-secondary. So if the name rings a bell to you, it's because she actually works here at BCC. I said, wow, you do quite a lot of interpreting. Do you have a preference? And she said, yes, my preference would be post-secondary. And for me, when she began to describe what she loves about post-secondary was kind of this big aha, light bulb going off moment for me. Personally, I never wanted to do post-secondary. I did not want to be in a classroom environment. However, she described post-secondary as almost like freelance with variety, but a little more structure. You're coming to the same location every day. You're getting to work with a team. But again, you have the variety. You might be in the automotive program one day or one semester and the baking program the next. And I thought, okay, this sounds a lot better than I actually expected. Um, I then went on to ask Sarah, well, what do you do if you're placed in one of those programs and you have zero schema of this? How do you get around that? She said, first and foremost, Brooke, use your prep work. You will be given prep work, which is a blessing because not all environments allow you to have prep work. So definitely be on top of that. Number two, you will be with a teamer. You will have a co-interpreter. You are there to use each other, lean on each other, ask for advice, ask for feedback and expertise. And lastly, resources. We are so grateful to have, or fortunate to have the resources online that we do. You can learn tons of different things literally at your fingertips, so don't be afraid to use it. Next, I asked Sarah about her professional development. What does Sarah do to keep moving forward on a professional level? So she said that Waverly sometimes offers professional development days in which she tries to attend when they do. She said, again, I use my team. I'm lucky enough to be working with a team as well as working with deaf staff. It's a great place to be mentored, but also be a mentor if need be. And lastly, again, online resources such as conferences. She said a lot of conferences take place in the States, but luckily if you're online, it's not a problem. So she really tries uh, to push herself uh, professionally. This kind of led into the next question was, what are your future aspirations or your future ambitions? It was a very short conversation. It was, yeah, nothing right now. My <laughs> plate is full, I'm busy, I like what I do. I see myself dabbling in different types of interpreting as I am, but sticking with post-secondary as that's what she loves. The next question I had for her was, what does she see, um, what issues does she see within the interpreting field? or if there's something that she could change, what would it be? And her response to me was, and I quote, um, you guys. And I was like, oh, okay. She's clearly not very confident in this group of upcoming interpreters. What the 
know. Um, but she said, the change from Douglas College to BCC has caused quite a frenzy. And in her personal opinion, maybe too much of a frenzy. People need to have faith in the fact that we, we got our program, it's up and running, it's happening, move forward. She also, a little piece of advice for us students, said be extra patient with our amazing faculty <laughs> because it's a, it's a big change going on. Um, and I said, yes, we know it was a stressful time, but um, yeah, she, she's hoping that us students and faculty in the community can again trust the process and have faith with this program moving forward. <laughs> okay, my next question for Sarah was, um, any memorable moments for you? These can be embarrassing, these can be funny, these can be sad. I don't know if you've already heard this bar because you're smiling. Um, Sarah's very funny. Sarah is funny. And Sarah said to me, well, yeah, actually, I signed blowjob one time by accident. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow, okay. I wasn't expecting that to come out of her mouth. But the speaker was talking about how to properly eat a rack of lamb. <laughs> And she said, listen, the best classifier was blowjob. I just didn't realize till after. So we were laughing for a good two minutes about that. Moral of the story, mistakes are gonna happen. Miscommunication perhaps at times. This is life, go with the flow. Not life or death here, he accidentally signed blowjob. Um, but mistakes will happen and laugh at yourself, be, be willing to laugh. A personal question I had for Sarah was social media. I don't think it's fair to assume that everybody knows this, but I'm going to assume it, that we need to be careful of what we post on social media, and we all know that by now. So I said to Sarah, do you keep your work completely separate um, from your social media? And she was like, yeah, big time, they are separate. Anytime I go somewhere for work, even if that's an event that I'm interpreting at, it will not end up on my social media ever. She said from her experience with talking to other interpreters, they feel the same way. They like to keep things very separate. <coughs> However, if she has a deaf friend that she's quite close with, that person's okay to be friends with her on Facebook or follow her on Instagram, whatnot. But in general, her rule for thumb is, I keep those separate. Those worlds of mine, they don't mix. But okay. Uh, another question I had for Sarah was feedback. There's one thing I've learned there was, if there was one thing I learned last year, big takeaway was the importance of feedback. And I said, how do you ask for feedback? It can't just be as simple as, hey, can you give me feedback? And she said, feedback is something that is very, very important that you also have to be careful with. The last thing you wanna do is seem like you're trying to get validation from the deaf person. That's not what you want. Um, your teamer or your co-interpreter is there to also give you feedback whether those are minor things like, hey, can you actually move a little to your left? Um, or if the deaf person wants you to sign this instead of that, that's the kind of feedback you can expect. But don't walk up to the deaf person and be like, hey, good, right? I'm good, right? You, you know, it can come off again as me expecting validation from the deaf person, which is not what we want. So yes, again, importance of using your team. They are there to support you and to help you through your interpretation. Lastly, of course, I had to ask Sarah for any piece of advice. And Sarah said to me, yes, I have a few. Number one, I am your twin, use me. One more, okay, thank you. Uh, yes, I'm your twin, use me. You have the great opportunity to be partnered with a professional in your field. Don't be afraid to use them. Number two, go to as many deaf events as you possibly can. I know that they're time consuming, but this is your time to really jump full, full head, full force into the community. And lastly, um, again, the emphasis on feedback. Accept the feedback, whether it makes sense to you, whether it doesn't, whether you agree with it, whether you don't. Anyone who's giving you feedback is there because they want you to do a better job at interpreting. So that's all about my twin, Sarah. Thank you so much for listening.
And you know, a vocational institute like BCC does have auto auto shop or auto body does have uh, you know pastry and bakery and whatever it's called <laughs> arts pastry arts culinary, something like that yeah. um, culinary right um, so so there are some things that are more um, trades like PCIT as well and then there are other insti you know institutions that are more academics so you you get more of the sciences and soft hard sciences soft sciences etc um, regarding uh, Social media, there was actually an interpreter, when Sorensen first opened up here, the first couple of years, there was an interpreter who lost their job because they had posted something um, on Facebook uh, that said something like, wow, just, just finished a really challenging shift, something, something. I can't remember, I, actually, I don't think I actually saw it, but she actually lost, she actually lost her job. A no no tolerance so and it was something that was actually considered to be fairly you know ben benign really it was uh, nothing you know about anyone's personal life um, and the importance of feedback we, we have to love that right and it's a, it's a fine dance as a student getting feedback sometimes you probably think do I do anything right <laughs> and maybe sometimes you have to uh, you have to identify that for yourself and ask for you know instructors um, feedback on that or, or their opinions on what you think you might be doing right. But um, yeah, that was great. Thank you very much. I, I, they're a good group, those five, for sure. Thank you. Do you want to pop on the yes. hall for a minute? Yes, please. And um, why don't we? You'd recognize her. Oh, she was, yeah, she was, yeah. we had her yeah, as an interpreter last here. year. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are going to see this, but I didn't, I didn't ask for Freckles. permission. Um, to Freckles use her photo, hand. she didn't initially even want me recording. Yeah. So I thought I'm not gonna ask for a photo, which she did let me record. Yeah. After. I yeah. Mean, 